Boy, is sales change. That's what we'll be talking about today. I've got a sales rep, an active live sales rep, much like you and me. And we're going to be talking about tonality, performance, and the differentiators that we make as individuals when we're dealing with people. I talk a lot about sales being a performance profession, meaning that it's not just what you say, it's how you say it, when you say it, to who you say it, with how much enthusiasm and tonality. And that's what we're going to emphasize today. We got uh, a salesperson who uh, went all the way to law school, uh, didn't work out, but then got into sales, loves it, wants to share what's working for him today. And at the end, I'll sum it up and I'll also tell you how I can automate this for you, how you can actually outsource this with both technology and people and how we do that in the course. Before we get into it, one of the great ways of connecting with people is video email. Co-video is the way I do it. It's the way you should do it too. Give it a shot. Try it out. See if you like it. But video email is one of the ways of connecting with people today because we are mammal to mammal selling whether you like it or not, whether you admit it or not. That's what's going on. They see you as a foe until they know you're a friend. And nothing makes you appear more friendly than a big smile on a video. Let's get into it. Also, check out PipeDrive.com. PipeDrive's just cooking, both on the technology side and the content side. Uh, great videos on YouTube, as well as their blog. And their product is just cooking. You've got to check it out. You can evaluate it for two weeks, not two weeks, two months for free with the Brutal Truth coupon code. Here we go. Hey, Morgan, welcome to the show. Is where you're getting started. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, Brian. So uh, my name is Morgan Williams, originally from uh, Atlanta, Georgia area. Um, I think I've, I've worked, um, I don't know, maybe I think I counted 14 jobs before I graduated from college. And they've always been, you know, sales type of positions. But my, my uh, true dream was to be a, a lawyer. Right when I was growing up, anybody anybody would ask me, "Hey, what do you want to do with your life?" I was thinking, you know, I don't know, contracts or criminal. You know, I don't really know. And I was always lawyer focused, uh, but I had worked, you know, jobs. You know, I worked at McDonald's. I worked at uh, in high school. I worked, um, you know, at Kroger in a grocery store. I even worked holding a sign on the side of the road, <laughs> spinning it. Uh, no, I, I wasn't. I didn't get to that level, but I just held it on the sign. That was the next step for a jeweler and a, a furniture dealer. And that actually played pretty well for a high school kid. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, went to college in the Midwest in Bloomington, Indiana, IU Bloomington. And um, towards the end of my time there, I got into law school, went down to law school at the University of South Carolina. And I did it. I did it. And um, what ended up happening was... Uh, Went into some financial issues, couldn't afford it, and ended up, I had to drop out. And at the time, it was the worst thing that ever happened to me, I felt. But it ended up being so great, like the best thing that ever happened to me, because I, I found sales. Like, I reconnected with, with sales and uh, went into logistics sales as a uh, freight broker working here in Chicago. I moved up here um, after that stint in law school. <laughs> And worked for um, uh, who a guy who ended up being you know one of my my mentors right when I was working for him in logistics and it was kind of the best experience uh, of my life. It was just straight cold calling, um, high volume sales, very transactional, and allowed me to build up a lot of sales acumen over the phone. And I started to learn the power of not just what you say but how you say it, right? Tonality persuasion, right? All those soft skills that aren't really taught by a lot of sales organizations because they really just don't have the people who, who know that, or even if they do know it, they're at a level of unconscious uh, uh, competence, right? <laughs> unconscious competence. And like, you just have to be there through osmosis. You can't necessarily learn it through um, a, a course. Those help, but um, there, there's nothing like being right next to someone and just absorbing it. So, um, I was there for about four years after I knew I wanted to get into technology. So I went to uh, another company working in cybersecurity, got an opportunity to do that. Um, that was great. It was the other end of the sales spectrum instead of, you know, high, high volume calls, you know, or yeah, high volume calls closing or one call closes. 
uh, it was a longer sales cycle, right? Two to three months up to a year. Um, the dollar values were larger and uh, it was more about navigating the organization and really getting to the decision maker. In logistics, you call somebody, they know why you're calling, you want their truck, you want to hook up freight, you want to give them money essentially to move whatever you're trying to move and they get the gist. In security or when you're selling in these corporate environments, it is not like that. Right? They do not the want opposite. to talk to you. Yeah. It's the exact opposite. They don't want to talk to you. Even if they may be interested in what you have, just getting that foot in the door is huge. Just getting that meeting. And I didn't know that at the time, but that's where I, I, I learned that, hey, being able to talk to people on the phone, being able to persuade on the phone, being able to get through and use creativity is really valuable if you're selling um, high ticket items, software, right? Um, which was, I was doing software or managed security services and what have you, but it's super valuable. And, um, uh, I started to get really creative with how I was doing outreach. Um, and I've always been kind of a sales nerd. So I've always done reading, listen to podcasts and, and, uh, reading blog posts, books, and all sorts of stuff, courses to try and get better. So all this was happening at once. Um, due to a reorg of the company, I decided, hey, this is a perfect time for me to uh, become self-employed and uh, work in a contract sales capacity, working for um, a lead gym company, a different cybersecurity company. That was great. Did that for about 18 months. Got to build up some skills here on my own um, with different prospecting strategies. And, and most recently I accepted an opportunity to work at Yelp um, in an enterprise sales capacity. So, and that's where I am now. Cool. And you're not heading back to law school anytime soon? Or? Absolutely not. Absolutely really? not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I just, you know, it's, it's not, it's not what it once was, right? The, the value of the degree, what you get in return just isn't what it used to be. So, yeah. And what do you like about sales? I like the fact that, and this is something I just, you continuously learning in sales and something I just kind of learned um, or just, you know, actually my wife was talking to me who's not even in sales at any capacity. She's a nurse. She was like, Hey, you know, um, when I was interviewing for new sales roles recently, she was like, Hey, you know, Nobody studied sales in school, right? No one, no one got a sales degree. No. And it's like everything you build up in sales is through, you know, usually on the job training or not training, but working and developing skills as you go. Yeah. Right. And what that's what that's what was most interesting to me or what has been most interesting to me about sales recently is because you really get out what you put into this career, right? It's performance driven, right? You literally get out what you put in, in terms of energy and sweat for dollars, but also in, you know, your quest for knowledge and how much you really put into your craft, right? So um, I think that's the biggest thing I've been really thinking about recently is like, you know, how, how can I continuously get better? So I feel like it's, you know, with, with sales, it's like you, you, you're never truly done. There's always something you can do more. You know, it's right. not like, well, this, this project's done. You know, we're good to go here. You know, um, or this case is done. There's like always something you can do and it continues to get better. So that's it, what I like. Yeah, and it has a lot of similarities to law in that certainly litigators, where you're mm -hmm. trying to keep both the witness and the jury focused on what you want them to focus on. Absolutely. And it's you have like, to you know, think through your questions. I know you're big into questions. Yep, absolutely. And it's like um, something you, when you start digging into sales training or sit and start doing more, getting into the craft, one thing you learn um, early on is like every piece of human communication involves sales or persuasion, right? In some capacity, it's always happening around us always, whether it be through advertising, written word, video, yeah. right, uh, audio, whether it be just two people talking together, one person talking to a group, one to many, right, there's always some sort of persuasion going on. Um, so I think that's super interesting. Like, how can you really, I think the best salespeople have a high EQ, um, and, and they can really key into that and use that to their advantage ethically. Yeah, so let's dig into that. I mean, you're pretty interested in cold outreach. Mm -hmm. How have you seen that evolve in the years that you've been in sales? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when I first started in sales professionally after graduating college, that was in 2012. 
right? I was doing straight cold calling. There wasn't um, a lot of email. We we're using kind of messenger, but even in the industry I was working in, it wasn't really, um, we weren't, there weren't really any tech stacks that I was using, right? When I moved into cybersecurity, that's where I kind of got more into um, uh, and kind of using more tools. But I think the biggest thing is the, the, the grab for attention, right? It is the fact that uh, people's inboxes are so, cl- they're, they're continuously getting more and more full with sales messages, right? It's like all of these, there's, there's the biggest thing is like there are more and more of these sales and marketing apps and, you know, technologies are entering the market, which allow people, which allow sales and marketing people to leverage their expertise and, and communicate their products messages more efficiently. But it's like, everybody can do that. Right? Cause <laughs> everybody longer has, hard. Yeah. Right. So it's like, how do you, you know, the big thing now is, is, you know, cold email. Right. Cool. And I, I feel like it's kind of dying off. Now. It's kind of hit. It's it, it's kind of on, on the downswing just because it's not as effective as it was even a few years ago, even in, you know, 2015, 2016. Um, it's not even as effective as it was then. Um, and now in 2019, it's like there's there's I remember even a couple of years ago um, using uh, a tool like Mailshake. Um, to automate your emails was even more novel than it is now. Now people kind of understand that, hey, I'm getting marketing messages, I'm getting sales messages right. uh, automated. And it's just not, you know, before it's like you do that and people are like, wow, I, I really respect your tenacity and follow up. I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know? I hit the button. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But now people, they understand it. So you got to get more and more creative. And it's like, I see the big uh, uh, well, I see things shifting more towards like not how efficiently I can communicate, but how impactful that message is. And a lot of that has to do with personal branding. I feel like, you know, we we started with company branding where companies, you know, they were first getting onto social media and they were, they were starting to uh, form direct communications with relationships now, and at least in a sales context, I'm seeing it's more important for salespeople to have their own personal brand so that when they're doing outreach to someone, you know, someone's going to look at whatever you're sending on LinkedIn or email and be like, okay, let me check this person out. What are they doing? You know, who are they? Yeah. And if, you know, if the, the, the more your, your kind of personal brand, the, the better or more impactful it is, the greater chance that someone will respond to you. Yeah. And I've always looked at it pretty much in the last year and a half is kind of viewing it as we're approaching strangers. And when somebody mm-hmm. knocks at your door, you look through the peephole, you look through your window. Right. Why? You want to know who is it? Exactly. Are they here to take my money or give me something? Exactly. How can you add value? Um, yeah, ab- absolutely. And it's like, and if you're working, when you're working in a company, when you're in a sales organization, you, you know everything about your product, you know everything you do, you know how it's great, you know how it can help people. And you're kind of reaching out with the pretense that like, oh, as soon as they see this, they're going to love it, whether consciously or subconsciously. And it's like, people still have that high barrier of, hey, I don't know you, I don't, you're trying to, you're one of the 50 people who's trying to sell me something, like, even if it's really good, like, I don't know you. Right. And, and, you know, frankly, I've seen this ever since I've been in sales, you know, because we've gone through technologies. We went through the drop by where people would just show up like Mm -hmm. door to door, even though it was business to business, hit the receptionist up. Can I talk to this person? And then we went to the phone. Mm -hmm. Now we're we're to email, we're to social. But the but people have not evolved that fast. We're still. I don't know you. If I don't know you, I assume you're here to take my money, my time, my energy. So why would I do that? Exactly. Exactly. I remember a quote um, uh, kind of uh, about that, that I love. It's um, uh, the tactics change often. The strategies sometimes change. The principles don't always change. stay the same. Right? <laughs> um, and it's like, it, it gets to a point where the, the medium becomes irrelevant. How you're reaching out becomes irrelevant to a degree. It's more about, you know, when you connect, what are you communicating? 
Yeah. Um, there is a, a prospecting strategy that is very powerful and most people are not using it. I want to talk about it on this, uh, on this episode. Um, so when I was doing um, contract sales, right, I was working for a Legion company, working for a cybersecurity company as well. This was different than my previous full-time role. I, I feel like cybersecurity is one of the toughest markets to prospect in oh. because there's a relatively high number of sellers compared to buyers and the sellers are growing rapidly and the buyers are stagnant. You know, if a company even has a security team, it's very small. Usually it's a big IT team and then, or an IT team and then like someone kind of does security, but if they have an IT, a security team, it's small. They don't have a lot of pull and security is seen as a cost center rather than a profit center, right? It's not like advertising and marketing. It's like security. Well, how little can we spend or, all right, we'll spend as soon as we get breached or something like that. Right, <laughs> until there's a problem. Until right? so there's a big problem, then we'll just kind of spend money and, and, and then you know, fire somebody and, and spend some money or whatever. But anyway, I was doing uh, prospecting and I, I, I tried to think about, you know, how can you give value to someone, right? How, you know, they know I'm a salesperson, but what can I offer them to give value? Um, I had been doing... Uh, podcasting most recently in the past six months I started a podcast but before that I always been doing uh, uh, blogging uh, and guest posting so I was familiar with the guest posting if people are listening to this and don't know what guest posting is it's basically you know um, when uh, when when, you know when someone gets on or posts their uh, blog post on another blog you're like a guest your guest blog and guest posting so I was looking, I was trying to prospect uh, C-level uh, people at um, companies in, in security, right? Usually um, CIO or C, CISO, CISO at different companies. And those guys, they just do not respond to people and they get tons of sales messages. So what I did is I looked for the ones on LinkedIn who were more active, right? They were either writing, posting, uh, blog po or post on the LinkedIn platform. Maybe they had their own blog on Medium. Maybe they had done interviews. People who looked like they were actively trying to become thought leaders, right? And what I did was I went to a cybersecurity publication and I said, hey, I want to write a guest post on your blog. I want to write, you know, what, I forget the title exactly, I, uh, but I posted on LinkedIn. It was like, you know, what 10 security leaders say about how security has changed, right? It's essentially a roundup post. I went to the people I wanted to get in contact with and I said, hey, you know, instead of saying, hey, I want to tell you about, um, uh, you know, our product, well, I wouldn't say, I want to say about our product, but instead of it being about, you know, their budget or, you know, it's, <laughs> right. it's, what you know, do. Right. Instead of being sales related, I said, hey, can I feature you on this? Uh, I don't need any of your time. I just sent over a few questions and, you know, just respond to these three questions and I'll show you the post before we publish it and publish it. The response was incredible. All right. These, these were, you know, C-level people at large companies who were um, immediately engaged and saying, thank you for doing this. And I'm and like, no, it's not an immediate sale, right? Of course. But, right. but, but it's a reply. give. You're showing right. up and they have to spend five minutes to help you, but then you are immediately helping them. Exactly. The personal brand, which they've demonstrated that they care about, is now elevated with your assistance. Yeah, exactly. So you went from unknown to known and right. you are bringing something. You're bringing lasagna to their house. Exactly. So when they look out and they see Morgan's at the front door, they know you're not there looking for a donation or selling an alarm system. Exactly. Exactly. And it's about st just starting that dialogue, right? Yeah. Getting on their, you know, they've got their AB pile, right? People, you know, a lot of salespeople directly go into that B pile of, you know, all right, we'll tell IT to block him or, you know, get them, you know, I'm, send them to spam or whatever, but just like getting on that short list or getting within their awareness is yeah. huge, <laughs> powerful. And, and I think people are distracted today with the, the tech stack and what I, and they're doing what I call dumb things faster. Yeah. It's like, absolutely. Okay. And then somebody posted on one of my things. Well, well do dumb things slower. And it's yeah. Like, Don't <laughs> do dumb things. Yeah. And do you know, smart things. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's, it could be tough with companies putting pressure on salespeople. Right. Yeah. 
did a certain number of activities. You know, I want you to do this many phone calls and this many emails per day. And it's like, okay, I can hit that, but I can't do that effectively, right? I can't put thoughtful outreach into. Right. Because the manager thinks that each one of those have an equal likelihood of closing and they don't understand that those are people. Yeah. They're not personas. Mm -hmm. They're not bots that if you happen to hit the right combination, the safe will open, you know, and what they give you is the combination is the silly ass sequence. Yeah. And it's like sitting on the ivory tower and just looking at the metrics and just being like, Hmm, you know, we have this many phone calls, this many sales. If we double that, we'll double sales. And just right. like, it doesn't work like that. No. I remember on a, a, on a podcast, uh, one of your podcasts recently that I was listening to, um, you were speaking with someone and talking about, Hey, as soon as you start measuring a metric, right, it's going to improve, not just because you're measuring it, but because people are going to find a way to kind of game, the game system. it. Yeah. yeah. Like, and- okay, you want the calls? I'll give you the calls. <laughs> 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 I'll give them to you. Right. And if you look at, I've always looked at the best salespeople are hyper focused. Yeah. And, and the more complex, because you had a from a simple sale, single call close mm-hmm. to a complex sale with the security. Right. Exactly. Um, you know, the simple sale, the numbers game probably works much better. Mm-hmm. But as it yeah. becomes more complex, your focus and your uniqueness and the value that you bring is the separation. Right. It's not right. your pitch. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. How, 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 how can you position yourself differently than everyone else, right? Both on a, a personal level, like, you know, in your personal thoughtful outreach and, you know, when it get when this, when the conversation gets more sales oriented, once you've kind of cracked that, you know, ice shield and, and you've gotten into a dialogue, right? How can you then, when it shifts to sales, how can you position your, your value add as, as something that aligns with what they are? trying to achieve right right? and it's like and this is orthogonal to what everyone else is teaching today because everyone else is teaching relevance personalization which are all good ingredients but it's still trying to play the numbers game it's like the tip it's the tip of the iceberg right it's 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 nice it's like sugar in the muffin yes Mm -hmm. the muffin sucks without sugar right but with only sugar it's nothing it's just sugar yeah, you have to put together the, the whole thing, and the numbers game should be inversed. Mm-hmm. Let's prioritize. Let's use our judgment, our skills, our intuition, and our history to prioritize these. Because the the ones that you picked weren't random; they right. were the ones that you did some research. You wanted to talk to them. They had evidence that they would care about this, right? And you hit them with that. Right. You didn't hit the ones that had never don't have a profile on LinkedIn. Right. Or just have one and just, you know, yeah, don't have a picture. And- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cause they don't care. I mean, they're just, they don't care just about not going to care. Right? There's there, they could care about something else. Right. Sure. And that's what you got to figure out. You know, uh, th- that's, that's the true beauty of the social or, or social media, the social media of social media of all these platforms is, is the information that you can gather right not using them as a direct marketing medium or as a direct sales medium like just i'm going to pound my linkedin dm inbox and say hey what's going on hey what's going on it's the fact that oh i can see what you're interested in. right i can get creative yeah um, you know. and i think we have to think more like detectives mm-hmm. meaning like if there was a crime in your neighborhood you don't go door to door you're like well who wanted my bike Right. Right. Who who's now riding my bike? Who's been checking my bike out? You know, who comes around my house at that time where my bike is out there? Mm-hmm. That's what we do yeah, in this right. sales. We're thinking like, who's most likely to care about this thing that I'm doing? Yeah. Who's most likely to engage and converse with me? There's 7 billion people on the planet. You're not going to call everybody. Absolutely. They have to have a phone. (laughs) They have to be in your territory. Absolutely. And it's the problem is it's it's difficult for management or for people looking at metrics and setting benchmarks and it's that's the problem. To quantify, right? Right. You know, it's how do you put a a number on that? And 
you know, it's, it's, well, it's a challenge. You know, right. And I think we're going the wrong direction because we're hiring. I mean, it's good for people right out of school to get a great job as an SDR. Yeah. But that's a tough job. Oh, yeah. And, and if you're given the wrong recipe and the muffin doesn't come out well, they don't blame, blame the recipe. Mm -hmm. They blame the person, the chef. But the chef yeah. is like, well, you know, I may not know how to cook perfectly, but I know this isn't working. Mm -hmm. You know? And the thing about the SCR is they're the first point of contact that these people have with your company. Yeah. Like, like they, they need to be well equipped and well prepared to, and to have these conversations and not push to just right. you know, and, hit as many people as possible. And nobody taught you tonality. Nobody said, Hey, Morgan, uh, right. your, your voice is too flat, you know, liven it up a little bit. You figured mm -hmm. it out trial yeah. and error probably. Yeah. Or you heard yeah. somebody else do a cold call and you go, wow, they put a lot more energy and enthusiasm in it. Let me try that. Yeah. You know, it's funny how it, you may start to make these connections the further you get in your sales career. My old uh, boss who I was talking about who really opened my eyes to, you know, what was possible. I mean, he was the highest earner in the company, came in at 5.30 in the morning, left at 3.30 p.m. He had been, you know, selling freight since I was in first grade. Like this guy was just a champ, right? And he used to, he was used to always just say, hey, um, you know, uh, you know, just speak with confidence, you know, just speak with confidence. I'm like, all right. What does that mean? Right. But then I hear, you're right. What does that mean? And then I hear him on the phone, like talk to someone about this crazy weekend he had. And then by the end of the call, he sold them like, you know, five different things and they're, yeah. and they're happy about it. And it's like, how do you do that? Years later, I had listened to a, a, a course by Jordan Belfort where he started talking about tonality and talking yeah. about body language. And I was like, okay, now I see how it's connected, you know, the inflection you use on your voice, right? The, the, the volume, the tonality, not necessarily volume, but the tonality, right? The, the, the cadence at which you speak, you know, that's how that's connected. And then I started learning more about tonal patterns and, and, and influence. And, and that's when it started to like, okay, there's, there's, a, there's something here. It's not just like, in the ether it's, it's right and, and this is what i call the performance profession of sales that mm. they could read the same script as you but if they right. don't have the enthusiasm the confidence like your manager did and this is what i see when people tell me oh i can still rock the phone and i go i bet you can but i bet you can't describe why yeah right, right? because you got the mojo with the client you you have a pattern it's your thing and I always use the comedian uh, analogy because there's comic writers and then there's comedians who perform right. the jokes and they take a year to build an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you're like, that's crazy. And they perform it three times a night. Yep. Three nights a week. And, and it takes a year before it goes on HBO or Netflix. Absolutely. But people don't realize how much work goes into that. Yeah. And like, I remember with comedians, you know, I listened to Joe Rogan's podcast. Of course, he's a comedian, talks about comedians. He used to talk about these, the old days back at the comedy store where he used to talk about, you know, people like Eddie Griffin and Martin Lawrence would just show up out of nowhere, cut the line and just go on for like four, five, six hours. Just, <laughs> just going on. Oh, I said, Chris Rock would come in and just be like, you know, if you ever hear Chris Rock on stage, he's like, what else? What else? What else? <laughs> he's, he's work. Like he, he does that when the cameras are off, when he's working through material right. and he's making those mental notes on, okay, this is where people laugh. This one went flat. Now I start to understand like how I can perfect that. It's that timing. It's and that timing. they do it for free in a yeah. lot of cases. They're yeah. not getting paid at, the comedy store. Exactly. They get the audience. They, they get, get the, the data. feedback. Yep. The feedback. How else do you get that? Absolutely. Right? You, you can't. You can't. You can't buy it. Right. You can't. Well, we get it for free, right? As salespeople, yeah. <laughs> lost yeah. deals, ignore, people hanging out. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like it's those those they're teachable moments, right? Learning, right? And that's that's why I feel like that's why most people hate sales or work. A lot of people wouldn't be caught dead in sales because it's, it's tough I and mean, you get rejected. It is tough. And, and there's kind of our mammal brain takes rejection the same way we take a physical pain. Mm -hmm. 
me hanging up on you is the same as, you know, slamming my door or alienating you from the tribe. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, our conscious mind then thinks like uh, either I'm wrong or they're a jerk or some combination thereof. Mm -hmm. And if we don't change the meaning of that, then we don't evolve. Yeah. Instead of taking it as like, okay, maybe I should have called a different person, used more enthusiasm, brought something to them to engage them. And that, that is hard to do. Yeah. I mean, you may be coming from law school or just naturally curious about that. You seem to like a challenge. Yeah. Well, my, my dad was, you know, I, I get a lot of it from my dad and I come from like a sales family, a sales background. So, um, you know, it's it, very consistent. Uh, yeah. So, so do I, both my parents were salespeople. Okay. Yeah. So you, you're kind of raised, uh, at least I was understanding what motivates other people. Yep. Absolutely. And yeah. just doing little stuff when you're a kid, you know, going door to door, sell, you know, selling the, you know, I used to sell these coupon books for the school and, you know, wrapping paper for the school. And, you know, my dad didn't, he wasn't, the, you know, hey, everybody sign this for my kid. You know, like everybody <laughs> well, in the car. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't like that. He was like, go, oh, you know, you go up there, you, you talk, you, you, you negotiate. Like, what, you, what is negotiate? You know, <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you know, but it's, 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 that's how, that's how it's done. That's how you just have, there's no way around it. You've just got to put reps in. Absolutely. Hey, this has been a great conversation and you do quite a bit of content development. Where can people go to read uh, the stuff that you're pu putting out and get to know you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my website, Morgan at Morgan or my website is morgandwilliams.com. M-O-R-G-A-N-D as in David, williams.com. Uh, or people can reach me uh, at morgan at morgandwilliams.com. I like the creativity, the originalness of what, um, what he's talking about here. And in the course, start the conversation, get the meeting. I show you how to do this 10 times faster at scale. And that's the problem with this uniqueness or even kind of, it's not really gimmicky. I think it's uh, a good use of content and a creative way. But how do you get it to scale, to crush your number? How do you make sure you're doing it with the right people in the right way, in a systematic way, and a way that you can outsource it, where you can use both a combination of technology and uh, labor that is outside the U.S. that is at $5 an hour? I show you how to do that and start the conversation, get the meeting. Uh, to update you on the courses, we're moving to more of a case study based, a lot of one-on-ones. I'm making more time available for that. I'm not sure how off, how much longer I can keep that included in the cost of the course. So uh, the course is probably going to go up in price October 1st. So make sure you, uh, if you're interested, uh, plan a call. Let's get you into it. Uh, people ask, does it take a year to go through it? Well, it takes, no, it doesn't, but we're trying to get good at something. I've been doing sales forever and every day I, you know, you try and find that little distinction that makes you a little bit better and then to put it into a system. So you get the compounding effect. You get compound interest on your skills and your techniques and your network so that tomorrow becomes more profitable with less effort and to understand the game better. Because too many of us, we just get comfortable in the service game, the response game, the stimulus. Oh, they asked me a question, I'll give them an answer. And then all of a sudden it doesn't go anywhere. If you don't understand how companies buy and how the bigger game works, you are stuck reacting instead of being proactive to win the sale. People ask, can I double my income? If you want, you're the only person in the way. I'm here to help. So what's included in the courses? Yes, you get 100% access day one. Uh, you can pay for it all at once or in monthly payments. It's not a membership. It's monthly payments. And you get office hours, which is a group meetup every other Friday, and unlimited one-on-one. -on -one. So you get to talk with me on Zoom where we apply the course to deals of yours. And if you're interested in taking your game to the next level, this is by far the most effective way. 
And if you're scared of spending the money, you got to ask yourself, why? Oh, oh, really? You think that money is going to do more effectiveness in, in your bank than it is in generating more income? You're in sales. You're not in service. You're a commissioned salesperson. You are the means of production. To be make your game better, that's all you have. You can, oh, try and fight for a better territory or game the system so it works better for you. But what you really want to do is make you better at it. That's it. We'll see you next time. Make sure you're checking out the YouTube channel, Maverick Method on YouTube. Uh, follow my funny videos on LinkedIn. Uh, give them a little like, a little uh, comment, a little share. I'd appreciate that. Tell somebody about the podcast. Hey, are you listening to Sales Questions? Brutally Honest Answers? Uh, you can submit a question anytime. I answer them as fast as I can on that podcast. You can just either send it to me at Burns at me.com or on LinkedIn, whatever is easiest for you. Uh, also, I'm having a lot more sales people on the podcast. So if you'd like to be on the show, if you have a particular skill or view on sales that you think the audience would like and that you'd like to share, let's get on. Let's get you on the interview calendar. So we're going to be taking this up a notch uh, in the next couple of months to end the year really strong. So we go into next year strong and max out your income. We'll see you next time.